Hey guys, how's it going? It's your Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to keep talking about Unity in C Sharp and I want to do a, an interesting video because it's going to be titled Laziness for C Sharp Developers. <laughs> the reason for that is because I really love some of these features that C Sharp provides with the newest versions. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I, I'm going to continue this on the fundamentals these are things that are really not that complicated, so I included it in the fundamentals of Unity and C Sharp. So let me actually disable video 9, and I'm going to create a new game object. This is going to be video 10. And just like we do it in every other video, I'm going to create a new script and C Sharp script, and this is going to be video 10. And let's wait until Unity in C Sharp compiles and associate video 10 with the game object. Excellent. Now let's go into Visual Studio Code or your preferred editor. And I'm gonna go into video 10. Okay, so so a lot of times when I talk when I talk about laziness, I'm not talking about you being lazy or anything like that. I'm talking about less typing. Like a lot of times I, don't, I really don't want to type that much. So what you can do with the newest version of C Sharp, you can do what's called a lambda. So let's say that in the start method, I wanted to know if, you know, this game object, let's say, for instance, I wanted to know the, the location of this game object. So I can say game object location, and we can do plus, and then I can say game object that position, transform, that position. Let's go back into Unity and let's hit play. And let's see what happens. So if we go to the console, we can see that we're getting the position of this game object. So if I were to change the position of this game, game object to be, let's say, x is 100, we should see 100, 0, 0, which, which is working. So the, the laziness part comes from creating a lambda, which is actually delegating this. It's creating a delegate behind the scenes and executing this. So I really like to use delegates whenever it comes to, in lambdas, whenever it comes to, you know, one line, code, one line of code. So the other thing that you can do that is actually really cool, say that I wanted to add a property to this video. Say that this video had uh, maybe a property called some property. And normally you do, you know, you do your getter, and then you do your setter, and you had another, you have another variable here called some property, and we can just set that this. Actually, this is not some property. This is some field, and some field. It's gonna be the value, and then I'm gonna give you two two different ones so that you can see the difference. So we're just gonna do, normally properties are public, so let's make this property public. And this is the old school way, right? You do your get, and you do return, you do some field, and then you got your setter, where you do some field equal value. So, so that's great, and, and it works great, and it has worked great over the years, but what if I wanted, I didn't want it to type all that. I wanted, I wanted the system to build that for me. So I could do string, I can do public string, some, some cooler property, and I can simply do a lambda. Again, some field, and then also a set of some field. So let's see if this works. So in my in my update method, I'm going to say debug.log. And I want to print out the value of some property. So I want to know that I'm doing that one. So I'm just gonna put the string representation of, of that name, of that property name, followed by some property. And that should give us a value. And I'm going to do the same thing for some color property. And let's go into 
let's go into, let's actually change this a little bit because I, I don't want to have to call that on every frame. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do public avoid debug debug something. And this is the one that is going to do the one liner for our debug.log. Excellent. So that's so that I can show you that you can do a method with the single line and using a lambda. In the star, I'm going to do more than one line. So that's what I'm going to use to print this out. And we can also call debug something from here. And we don't need to use the, the update method. So just as a recap, I'm, I'm calling this one-liner using a lambda. And then I'm going to call some property, which is using the old way of basically defining a property and setting its value and also using the new way using a lambda expression. So let's go back into Unity and let's hit play and we are getting an error. Let's go back and fix that error. Open it up and let's see where did I make the error. And it's complaining, oh it's complaining about the semicolon on the setter. Excellent. Now let's hit play. And we're also getting an error on this one. Let's go back in here. And hit play. And I see what I did wrong. So whenever you're doing your getter, I'm telling it to basically retrieve this property, but on my setter, I never set it to the value. So you can, you still need to do that because you need to set the value of some fields to something. So now let's look at the log. So we can see our game object location at 0, 0, 0, just like we had initially. And then we see some property is some field and some color property is some field as well. So that it's all working. So let's test the setters just to make sure both setters are working fine. So let's do some property equal actually that actually set it. So some property change and let's just do some cool property change. And what I'm going to do is I want to print them out. So I'm going to print the values out there and I'm going to print the values after we use the some color property. Cool. So let's hit play to stop it and play one more time to play the game. And we can see that we're still getting the same information here. We set the value of some property to some property change. Also the value of some property cool, some cooler property, which is the same value of that. So that the getter is working fine. And then we change it to something else. And that's also working fine. So you can see that these two are completely, you know, they're complete, they, they both work the same way, except that we're using a Lambda to, to, to get and set the values. So why, why would you use this versus, you know, the old way where you're setting curly braces? This is what I call laziness from a developer or easy or code that you don't really want to, you want to keep clean and structure. So I like it this way. I, I really like the one-liner methods, just like I did in here. If it's more than one line and it becomes really hard to read, then in that case, you know, for maintenance, then I would make sure that I'm using my curly braces to define the methods in, you know, in more, in more of an elegant way. So this is really up to you on how you want to structure your code. You have both ways of using C-sharp. So let me actually do one more where I'm actually returning a value from a one-liner. So I could use a string, get some data, and I can do a lambda just like I did before. But in this case, I want to return some property. So we can do some property. And if you notice, I didn't really have to do a return. Normally in a method, you have to, if you specify, if you create a method that returns a value, I would need to do a string, get some data with return. And then I need to do return explicitly some property to return it. 
So with the lambda, you don't need to do that. It is basically implicit that it's going to return a value of some property. So this is more. This is very short. I really like it. And this is up to you whether you want to use a method to do that or you want to use basically a lambda to define it. So you could do some things like this too. I want to say, is this object valid? I use this a lot for booleans. So you can say, you know, let's say that some property needed to have a length. Maybe the length needed to be greater than three, which in this case is because we name it some field. So, so you can also do a Boolean, you know, expression where we're checking to see if the length of this property, the how many characters we actually type in is greater than or equal to three, and that is going to return true or false. So I use that a lot. So that's really all I wanted to cover in, in today's video. If you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned, let me know through the comments and don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thank you guys.